Well, President Cyril Ramaphosa will uh, this week undertake a state visit to Qatar at uh, the invitation of the Qatari government. The state visit will form part of two days of engagement between the governments of South Africa and Qatar on the 14th and 15th of November. The visit occurs in the context of three decades of diplomatic relations between the two countries who will celebrate the 30th anniversary of establishing diplomatic relations on the 11th of May 2024. This visit will be uh, President Ramaphosa's first uh, visit to the state of Qatar as head of state. Meanwhile, the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Dr. Naledi Pandor, has uh, arrived in Qatar ahead of uh, President Ramaphosa's visit. Earlier today, Minister Pandor addressed the Middle East Council on Global Affairs in Doha, Qatar. As a country, we remain committed to the right of both Israel and Palestine to exist. With Israel peaceful and secure, side by side, with a Palestinian state that is peaceful and secure. We are also aware that many Palestinians and Israelis are of the view that a just and lasting solution may include approaches that facilitate Palestinians and Israelis living together peacefully under security arrangements where all their human rights are guaranteed and protected. There are those views on both sides. What has been unsettling is that we have helplessly seen years of inaction by the international community as ongoing settler expansion into Palestinian territories and ongoing violations of multiple United Nations resolutions on the issue of settlement expansion continue. It can't be that international law is the preserve of some and not the preserve of others. We also do not agree that we should say we must all follow a rules-based order. But the rules are very different for some and very advantageous for others. We do not accept those distinctions and it is what causes the world to have the equality that we see today. The current assault on Gaza is something that all of us as human beings should reject. Of course, the Hamas attack on civilian targets is something we also cannot accept. But collective punishment and the relentless assault on civilian targets is a blight on humanity and is a true human tragedy. It also offends international human rights law, international humanitarian law, and yet no action is taken. Just last week, the UN Secretary General referred to Gaza as a children's graveyard, with over 4,500 innocent children killed. And the death toll among UN workers has reached an unprecedented 89, had reached at that time. Gaza authorities estimate that a further 1,500 children are missing and are likely under the rubble of bombed residential buildings, hospitals, and schools. The Security Council of the United Nations has failed the people of Gaza and the West Bank. We need a much more effective United Nations that can prevent war, protect civilians, and ensure security for vulnerable people in conflict situations. The Security Council has shown itself inept at doing all of these things at this critical time. For more on this, uh, we now speak to Tembi Safakude, who is the director at Africa Asia Dialogues, and he joins us via our video link. Uh, Tembi, thank you so much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. Always a pleasure talking to you here on the late edition. Of course, President Cyril Ramaphosa will be making his way to Qatar. This is his first state visit. Uh, what do you make of uh, this visit? What are your expectations in terms of the conversations that will take place on this trip? Well, I think there are two main um, re uh, factors to mention. The first one is that Qatar is a, is a, a major 
oil and gas uh, exporter and producer. And uh, it's also very aggressive in terms of its business and investment strategies around the world. And I think President Cyril Ramaphosa is likely to explore that uh, uh, relationship, which is business relationship, that has been going on between South Africa and Qatar. Qatar happens to be the fifth uh, largest uh, country in the Middle East that is trading with South Africa. And I think what President Cyril Ramaphosa hopes to do is to try and change that into uh, increasing business uh, transactions between the South African companies and Qatar. That's one. But two is Qatar is also very much involved in terms of trying to negotiate a peaceful resolutions to what's currently going on in Gaza. Yeah. Um, it hosts Hamas, and hopefully President Ramaphosa is going to take that advantage in terms of be him being granted to sit on the table uh, when the negotiation begin in earnest. Mm. And the fact that, uh, you know, uh, this state visit takes place uh, during a time where there is uh, the war uh, between Hamas and Israel, and the fact that, uh, you know, this country hosts uh, uh, Hamas, uh, you know, what do you make of uh, the timing of this visit? Well, the timing, of course, is, is very opportunistic because South Africa's foreign policy often punch, punches way above its weight. And I think what has been happening now is that South Africa wants to be part of the team that will hopefully bring some sort of peace or ceasefire between the Israelis and the, uh, the Gazans or the Palestinians in Gaza. So President Cyril Maposa has been very active, including Minister Naledi Pando in both in terms of their rhetoric and in terms of uh, historically and currently in trying to bring peace to the two uh, warring factions. Of, although, of course, South Africa has taken a much more clearer position in terms of who they support in this regard. But for a very long time, South Africa has always been part uh, and parcel of the process in the Middle East. And I think they want to re-establish that position. They want to be part of the negotiation negotiations uh, when they start because, again, it's international relations, it's prestige. And uh, anyone who's going to try and achieve some semblance of peace uh, at the moment uh, will be regarded as a leader in international relations. And South Africa, I don't think, wants to be left behind in that regard, notwithstanding, of course, the rhetoric uh, that we've seen, which, which, which places South Africa totally and squarely on the side of the Palestinians. But I think they still want to be uh, part of those negotiations, and I think that's what President Ramaphosa will try and impress when when he meets uh, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. And um, I think South Africa will, could and will likely succeed because it's one of the most uh, powerful countries in Africa. And I think um, the negotiations that will be taking place henceforth will require all parties from different corners of the world. Are you saying that uh, this is quite opportunistic, uh, the timing of uh, uh, this visit uh, by the South African government? If maybe you can also uh, bring us up to speed there in terms of, uh, you know, from a visit of this magnitude and where South Africa has clearly, uh, you know, stated um, who uh, it sides with. It's been quite bold uh, to say that it stands uh, with uh, the people of Palestine, but at the same time uh, uh, condemns uh, Hamas. What does it stand to benefit, really? Well, with, Qatar, with Qataris or with, within the international global system, South Africa is likely to uh, entrench its position as a peacemaker, uh, something that we inherited from President, Mapos, uh, President Nelson Mandela. And I think they want to resuscitate that image, which over the years, to an extent, has been dwindling in terms of our importance and strategic positioning when it comes to solving uh, international conflict. So I think what South Africa is trying to do is to resuscitate that position and re-entrench itself once again as a peacemaker and the main negotiator, particularly from the global south. So that's very important. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think also it's important at this point um, to take advantage of establishing relationships with countries that you ordinarily uh, or wouldn't have uh, relationships. And I think the war in Gaza, notwithstanding the atrocities that we see happening, 
also presents political and international relations uh, and business opportunities for many uh, countries uh, around the world. And South Africa is taking that position. The fact that it's been quite vocal in terms of its condemnation of what's happening in Gaza places it in a much more um, attractive position for other countries, particularly in the Middle East, to court and invite South Africa to participate in various multilateral and bilateral uh, negotiations with the intention, of course, that they will entrench and strengthen the relationship when the dust settles in Gaza. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Tembi, someone would also ask, uh, uh, you know, the timing again uh, of, uh, from uh, this uh, state visit. Uh, we also know that Qatar is currently hosting Hamas and uh, the relationship and the role that Qatar plays uh, for Hamas. Uh, uh, one would ask, uh, may this dent South Africa's image somewhat? Uh, because it is indeed going to a country uh, where there is this huge spotlight when it comes to Hamas um, and, uh, you know, the war in the, in the, in the Middle East. East? Well, I don't think so. I think Qatar has explained the reason why it continues to host Hamas. Its proximity to Hamas enables it to avail Hamas for negotiations, or Qatar could easily negotiate on behalf of Hamas, but its proximity makes it very easy for it to, go, to continue negotiating. South Africa is quite popular at the moment um, in the Middle East because of its stance. Uh, when it comes to uh, Gaza. And uh, uh, Minister N Naledi Pando also uh, at, uh, rhetoric has been uh, amplified in various parts of the Middle East. So South Africa is quite respected uh, at the moment because of its stance. And I think uh, the involvement of South Africa in these negotiations will certainly please the Palestinians. And I think at this point, Palestinians, including Hamas, will insist that South Africa become part and parcel of the negotiation uh, grouping that will be meeting with the Israelis should that happen. Yeah. So South Africa, I think, is in the process of trying to establish that and ensuring and giving some assurances and comfort to the Qataris that they are fit for purpose and ready to do so. And Qatar, of course, cannot ignore the noises and signals uh, that are emanating from the Middle East regarding South Africa's support uh, and South Africa's popularity at the moment within the Middle East. And I think this visit will further amplify Qatari's position in terms of being the leader in this process of trying to reach a ceasefire and eventually peace in the Middle East. Tembisa, thank you so much uh, for your time here on SABC uh, tonight. That is uh, Tembisa Fakute. He is the Director of Africa-Asia Dialogues. There, giving us his insight and his analysis when it comes to President Cyril Ramaphosa's official state visit to Qatar. It will be a two-day state visit over the 14th and 15th of November.